Nikola Tesla was a Serbian-American inventor, electrical engineer, mechanical engineer, and futurist best known for his contributions to the design of the modern alternating current electricity supply system. Amongst many other things, Tesla was way ahead of his time, and the world today would have been very different if he were not pushed aside by some heinous and despicable people of influence at that time. The life and challenges of Nikola Tesla, however, are a story in itself, inspiring, full of lessons, and also, for some other time. Today instead, we will begin with just an excerpt from the great man's life. The year is 1899. Location, the Tesla Experimental Station, Colorado, USA. A 43-year-old Tesla working is at his laboratory, studying the use of high voltage, high-frequency electricity in wireless power transmission. With his newly created Tesla coils, the scientist discovered that he could transmit and receive powerful radio signals when they were tuned to resonate at the same frequency. During one of the tests, Tesla said that he was receiving strange radio signals coming from space. Tesla believed that someone was attempting to communicate with him through numbers, since they are a universal language. In the later years, Tesla documented his experience stating that a strange feeling was growing on him that he was the first to have been contacted from the extraterrestrials. The changes I noted were taking place periodically, and with such a clear suggestion of number and order that they were not traceable to any cause then known to me. The feeling is constantly growing on me that I had been the first to hear the greeting of one planet to another. Tesla wrote of the signal. Astronomers today, however, have determined that those radio pulses were most likely naturally occurring signals that space objects emit while in orbit. The prevailing theory, while still unlikely, is that Tesla heard a pulsar, or a faraway celestial body, that emits regular pulses of radio waves. But what if the source of the radio signals weren't natural? Our artificial satellites communicate by using radio waves to send signals to the antennas on the Earth. What if the radio signal received by Tesla was coming from something orbiting the Earth at that time? Something artificial, from a technology that is not human. The answer to Tesla's mysterious radio signals wasn't possible back then. But today, with our technology, we can definitely spot an imposter if it were orbiting our planet. Orbit. Beyond the blue. Let's journey from 1899 to 1998. Humanity has seen leaps and bounds in technology in the last hundred years. We have set foot on the moon, launched satellites, and sent probes hurtling towards interstellar space. It is a phenomenal time to be alive, and in terms of space exploration, we have just left a cosmic shore. December 1998, the location, International Space Station. The crew of the Endeavour Space Shuttle is working towards the construction of the International Space Station. It is their ninth day into the mission, and so far, it is all going according to the plan. But that is about to change. As the crew unpacks new hardware, they spot a shadow floating in space. Without wasting any moment, they quickly begin to take photographs. What they find out to be looming at the darkness of space is an irregular object, very difficult to identify. It was as if the object was watching their every move silently, while camouflaging itself against the murk of space. While this unidentified object looks nothing like a man-made craft, NASA says it's a large cross-section of the thermal blanket in orbit that got broken off from the space station. But the bizarre shape of it makes it very hard to believe that it is a thermal blanket. This brings us to what happened about 25 years before this day. Astronaut Gordon Cooper, who flew both the Mercury 9 and the Gemini 5, claims to have seen an entire convoy of UFOs during his time with the Air Force. Interestingly, 10 years later, he came across something very similar. In 1963, while on a solo journey around the Earth, 
When he was just finishing his 20 to orbit trip, he saw a green glowing object hurtling towards his Mercury capsule. The scene was picked up on radar by the tracking station in Muchia, Australia, which makes it quite extraordinary and very believable. When he described the incident to the United Nations, he said that these extraterrestrial vehicles and their crews were visiting from other planets. He said that while most astronauts are reluctant to discuss UFOs, in 1951, he had the privilege of seeing several UFOs of different size flying in fighter formation in the general direction of east to west over Europe. Later Cooper changed his statement and has since produced transcripts to the contrary, stating that he never saw an alien spacecraft during that particular mission. Is this some sort of a cover-up? Well, you tell us. Meanwhile, the object seen by the Endeavour crew later went on to be dubbed as the Black Knight Satellite. No one knows from where this name came to be about. While NASA denies the existence of such a satellite, could it be that the Black Knight really does exist? If we were to consider that aliens have a much more advanced technology, it is possible for the Black Knight to mimic one of the small pieces of space junk that are no larger than 10 centimeters in size because space organizations exercise more scrutiny over larger objects. What do you think it is? A thermal cover that chipped off of the International Space Station, or something we won't be told about? Space is fascinating, but there is so much that we don't know about what lies in the vastness of its lap. Many astronauts who have visited space have a different story to tell. From an array of spaceships and bizarre floating beings, to extraterrestrials and weird lights. They claim to have witnessed many strange and bizarre scenes that will send shivers down your spine. Imagine you're alone in a tiny spacecraft it's your first time up there, all alone in endless space. Then suddenly a knocking sound. That's what happened to Yang Liyue, China's first man in space, on his maiden flight in 2003. Yang said that the knock on the body of his spaceship was quite strange and scary. He went on to describe the mysterious knocking as the sound of a wooden hammer on an iron bucket. When he looked out of the spaceship, he did not see anyone. While nobody has decoded this mysterious knock, other Chinese astronauts in later missions reported hearing similar sounds. In fact, in 1969, a test flight for the moon landing mission orbited the moon, and on the far side, while cut off from radio contact with Earth. The astronauts heard a strange sound they couldn't explain. During the Apollo 11 mission in 1969, after Armstrong landed on the Moon, it is believed that NASA lost transmission with the space mission for about two minutes. It is rumored that during that time, Armstrong sent a secret message to NASA saying, these babies were huge, sir. Enormous, oh God. You wouldn't believe it. I'm telling you there are other spacecrafts out here, lined up on the far side of the crater's edge. They are on the moon, watching us. While there are several such tales about Armstrong and his first lunar landing, he himself is quite secretive and reticent about his experiences. He will not confirm or deny such rumors, perhaps because there is likely no factual basis for these musings. Or perhaps, they are so fantastical, that if true, they would create a huge uproar. Meanwhile, NASA astronaut Story Musgrave had a strange tale to tell. He claims he saw an eight-foot-long white snake floating through space, a man with a solid reputation. It is difficult to debase his claims as untrue. When it was suggested that it could have been a hose detached from the spaceship, he strongly refused that allegation. Many have debunked the sighting to be space junk, but Musgrave says quite adamantly that the white snake, oil, had its own propulsion technique. Moreover, he says that he saw it twice. I guess you can be wrong once, but twice. We don't know. In 2005, American astronaut Leroy Kiro, commander of the International Space Station, saw a set of strange lights in space during a spacewalk. While it could be rendered as sceptical, 
He was not alone in seeing this upside down V formation. His crew saw it too, as it flew past their spaceship. Some skeptics say that it could have been the light emanating from a fleet of fishing boats along the South American coast. However, Kiro was 230 miles above Earth when this happened, and for lights to be observed so high up is quite impossible. While Kiro is reluctant to believe that aliens from another dimension may have visited Earth, he is not ruling out this possibility entirely. What do you think? While conspiracy theories regarding aliens in space and spacecraft from other worlds are in abundance, the things that have been spotted by astronauts in space are open to interpretation. While there is no way to prove or disprove these mysterious sightings, it does make one wonder, are we really alone? Beyond the Blue